I choose to challenge injustice. Talking about gender inequity in the workplace, there are a number of different factors that contribute. One is unequal expectations or gender roles uh, that affect men and women differently. Another is are the structural inequities, uh, both within industries when men and women are paid differently, or between industries, because you see that industries where there are a lot of women working, uh, people actually tend to get paid less. What people have noticed as the coronavirus pandemic played out was that the gender inequities have worsened. One of the reasons is that if the children are kept home um, and they're at home full time, then it tends to be uh, women who end up taking care of the children, and so they're spending less time on work, even if they're in the same position uh, as a man of a similar age and with similar uh, lifestyle. Perhaps you would have a woman who has the opportunity to spend more time on work by taking some of those chores and giving them to someone else. So paying, for example, for a cleaner, or paying, for example, for a babysitter outside of school, if schools are closed. Um, but what happens is the person who usually is the cleaner or is the babysitter is also a woman. And very often they're also, for example, uh, they're from a less wealthy background or perhaps they're a woman of color or have a migration background. And so what happens is you end up with a situation where even if some women are able to uh, find a way out of doing more household chores, then that tends to be also affect women of color um, and poorer women. And so there's this cascade that happens where everybody is affected by this and only some people are able to get out. And that actually results in more work for other women. So one thing that's important to remember about inequity is that it's also intersectional. And what that means is that it's not just looking at gender differences, but also looking at differences in wealth, looking at differences in education level, uh, differences in whether uh, you're considered a white person, black person, person of color, whether you have a migration background or not. All of these things contribute to the particular experience of the individual of inequity in the workplace. Um, and it also contributes to gender inequity. So actually, when you're thinking about gender inequity, there are a lot of things that can be done. Um, some of these things have met resistance, but that resistance, in, from my perspective, it doesn't come from the fact that they don't work. It, people resist because they do work. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that the strategies for combating inequity need to be as diverse as the causes of inequity are. So there's been a lot of focus on personal uh, you know, helping to change personal attitudes, things like diversity trainings, but also structural factors can play a big role. So part of furthering inequity is also helping women to find stable jobs, to ensure that people who want jobs can find those jobs, and to help ensure that there's opportunities for advancement um, on a structural level. Um, in terms of the university, for example, things that have been tried are quotas, so hiring more female professors, um, there are programs to help ensure that uh, female professors who are hired at lower levels can have the opportunity for advancement. Um, and those can be really successful also in terms of building a cohort so that it's not just that there's one woman or a couple women in each department and they're isolated, but that you can have also contacts with people in different fields, for example. So that approach of helping to build a community um, and also helping to build a community of people of different genders but who are supportive of gender equality, that's actually can be very successful. Um, but you need really all different levels, the personal and the structural. I think there's really an opportunity to live in society differently and to make a different kind of society. So traditionally, a lot of societal uh, interaction was about competition and was about really, um, sometimes really uh, difficult forms of violence, also whether symbolic, but also physical. Um, and one of the things that I think uh, is possible now than maybe wasn't in the past is that people can find and generate new ways of being together so that everybody is valued. Um, so rather than thinking that people need to be the same in order to interact, you can actually find uh, the joys and the promises of diversity. And in that way, people can come together and actually interact in different ways that sort of recognize what everybody brings to the table. And for me, that's a much more interesting place to live.